I'm talking to people who see a $200 price tag on something that looks at this a hole up in this video saying it's the most affordable option for what you want and that's still too much money for them. They're like, what the hell? I have like a hundred bucks at most. Give me a capture card. And it becomes hard to recommend one for that price. At many points in time, I'm just like, you should save up because the ones you're getting for that price aren't great. Like many of you, I was pretty surprised to hear when Atomos announced their new capture card, the Atomos Connect. But not quite as surprised as I was to see that it looked exactly like the $15 or as low as $3 can't link that I reviewed back in June of this year because it looks almost identical. I was thinking surely they can't have just directly cloned it or just be ordering these off AliExpress and slapping their logo on it, right? So I reached out to review because I wanted to check it out. It's Atomos. I love Atomos. Unfortunately, it really does seem like they just ordered a bu bunch of these off AliExpress and slapped a logo on it and they're selling it for $80 now. Now you might be asking yourself, what even is this? Well, this is a tiny little USB capture card that will take an HDMI input and display it as a UVC or basically a virtual webcam to your computer to use with Skype, Zoom, Discord, streaming in OBS, Wirecast, XSplit, Streamlabs OBS, what have you. It, it allows you to digitize your HDMI signal, be it from your camera like I have going on here. We've got my two A6400s for the face view and the side view, hello. But it will also let you connect the HDMI output of Atomos's other uh, field recorders and switchers and things like that, such as the Shoguns, the Ninjas, and so on and use that as a basically video mixer to then send to your feed and things like that. Pretty cool, but if you're not sure about the context of the capture cards that I have reviewed, this is not actually a great value, and we're going to be talking about that in today's review. In every video like this, I reference past videos that I've made on Subject X or Product Y that would help expand your understanding of the subject at hand in the present video. However, more and more, it's becoming more difficult for you to actually find the videos that I'm referencing. I want to change that, and that starts with Nebula. I've partnered with a bunch of my creative friends for our own platform where we don't have to worry about demonetization or fighting an algorithm for you to find our content. Here, I'll have all of my normal videos that you know and love, completely ad-free, as well as new Nebula originals and exclusive content that goes beyond what's available on YouTube. Again, ad-free. The platform features some of the top education creators from YouTube, as well as unique collaboration opportunities. CuriosityStream saw what was happening over on Nebula and wanted to support it further and partner up for more educational content. We have a deal now where if you sign up with the link below, you have access to CuriosityStream and their full library of great documentary and educational content, as well as all of Nebula's content for free included in it. So CuriosityStream is also offering a major promo right now where you can get full access to their site and Nebula at the same time as long as your CuriosityStream subscription is active for just under $15 a year. That's 26% off the usual annual price. Less than $15 a year for thousands of documentary and educational content as well as everything we're doing over on Nebula, which is, and it's also the best way to support my channel at the moment as well. While you're there, be sure to check out original shows such as Alex Goes Bananas, where Alex Nichols checks out the pop culture that I grew up with and is set to just make me feel like an old man, even though I'm not that old yet, as well as the podcast Genesis from Alex or Low Spec Gamer, where he talks about the origin stories of your favorite YouTubers. If you want to support my channel and other educational content, check out curiositystream.com slash epos for sign up for just under $15 per year. Bonkers price, lots of great content, don't miss it. If you're new here, hello, I'm Epos Vox, the stream professor, and on my channel, I review a ton of capture cards, be it USB or PCIe, or I, I saw slot back in the day. Uh, I have some of those reviews coming as well, just for fun. I, th this is kind of the focus of my channel. So if you're coming at this from a perspective of I'm an Atomos user and I want to see what their capture card is like, I'm going to have something for you as well. But I'm also coming at this from the context of I've re already reviewed this exact capture card, which you can get for as low as $3 if you're willing to buy from shady sites like AliExpress or $15 on Amazon. And so I'm pretty frustrated from that front as well. So I'm going to try to balance out both perspectives here. And I'm, I'm going to play a little bit of devil's advocate because I love Atomos. As mentioned, I have the Ninja V, I have the Ninja Inferno, and I've used a couple of their other products and enjoy them very much as well. So I love Atomos's products overall. I just feel that this is not really up to their standards because what they have done here is they have taken the exact same capture card that you can buy that has no official brand name. It's one of those that there are a lot of products 
available especially in the capture card scene now that are ba they basically have no direct patent or design direct manufacturer they're just remade and reproduced by a bunch of different factories in china and slapped on with a bunch of different brand names which is why a lot of these budget capture card reviews i'm doing all have like 60 different amazon pages because they're sold by a bunch of different people and atomos has literally just taken that part for part and changed the text on the outside of the shell and released it and that was pretty disappointing they cloned it exactly so what i had hoped would happen was they saw everyone working from home in the first couple quarters of this year and all the demand for capture cards and the issues with that and that they got inspired to make their own because atomos makes really great capture products overall that surely they could do a great usb capture card right well apparently not but the issue here i think comes down to that many companies whenever they are entering a new product line which i guess technically this would be that for atomos they basically just clone or relabel someone else's product with permission if it's a real company these aren't made by real companies essentially and they sell that as their own first to kind of get a gauge on what the market expects what their users want and how it goes before really designing their own camera companies do this capture card companies do this gaming companies do this it's all over the place at the same time they could have chosen any number of <laughs> capture cards to clone and use for this and have served you a lot better like there's even another one which is this exact same capture card but they went ahead and chopped off the end and made it a USB-C detachable cable for the exact same card that's at least a physical improvement that they could have made and they did not here in fact when you open up the box all you get in it is some paperwork that isn't super useful because it's plug and play and the capture card you don't get the USB extension cable that comes with a lot of them which would have been very useful because this is fat and will probably block off other USB ports for you. You don't get an HDMI cable. You don't get anything. You just get this for $80. Not a great value. So for this review, I will be covering it from all uses, but you will see me leveraging some game footage here. Uh, this isn't exclusively for game streamers. However, game consoles and gaming platforms allow me to test the variety of different video formats and things like that that are expected from my capture reviews, which is why I lean on them so heavily and the average capture, capture card market viewer is from the game streaming scene but this will still apply to you even if you're not a gamer so first and foremost we should talk about the fact that this is a uvc capture card this means that it is plug and play on windows mac and linux and allows you to use it in all of your video calling apps because it shows up as a webcam in your operating system which means skype zoom discord windows 10 cameras at camera app will all detect it as a webcam and allow you to video call stream capture whatever so that's really handy and all of that works fine Video codec support wise, most capture cards these days are uncompressed. There's a couple older USB 2 ones that do onboard H.264 compression. This is bad. You don't want that. I have a whole video explaining that. It's not great. I'll have an updated video explaining that soon. But most of the good ones are at least using NV12, YUY2, or XRGB. These are uncompressed video formats in 420 for, y for NV12, 422 chroma subsampling for YUY2, and 444 for XRGB, which is less common on USB. For a camera input, you generally want 422 available, or at least proper 420, but you want an uncompressed stream. This makes it lower latency to your processor, to the system for syncing up with audio and things like that, and it means you get higher quality because it's not going through an extra layer of compression. This only uses MJPEG, which is literally motion JPEG. Every frame is a JPEG frame, which means you have lower quality, more artifacting, and more noise out of the box before you even apply your actual stream compression on top of that, which is not ideal. <laughs> Technically, it does have YUY2 support, only at 5 FPS. Maybe not ideal. Specs-wise, in terms of like video formats, it supports up to 4K 30 input and then does 1080p actual capture. So you can put in, say, something like this, the A6400 or my A7S2 in at 4K 30, and it will capture a 1080p 30 feed from it. Or you can put in 1080p 60 and it will actually capture 1080p 60 from it. A lot of the knockoff cards apparently had bad firmware. So even the ones claiming to do 1080p 60 that I reviewed before were not doing 1080p 60. I've been talking again to Arsenio Dev, the guy who started taking these apart and actually analyzing these. And apparently you can just flash the right basically firmware onto a lot of them to get 1080p 60 working again, which is really interesting. What is also interesting is you can actually hook up a game console such as the PlayStation 4 Pro or Xbox One X and 
tell it to do 4K60 input, it will do it at 420 instead of 444, and you can still play in 4K60. It will only be capturing 1080p 30 out of this, however. So it is only 30 FPS. But say if you wanted to do game consoles hooked up to an HDMI splitter, because you'll th there's no pass-through. So if you want to use this with a game console, you need an HDMI splitter anyway. And then you can play in 4K60 and just capture in 30 FPS if that's what you want to do. There is no 1440p support or anything really between 4K30 and 1080p. Like none of that works. It just doesn't detect it, which is to be expected, but annoying. So in all of my capture card reviews, I do a latency test. Typically I test the pass through to make sure it's real time, which doesn't apply here. There's no HDMI output, but then I also test the latency of rendering the video feed to OBS's preview so that you can sync it up with your audio. Lower is better. The fastest I've ever really tested is 36, but usually capture cards are between 55 and 85 milliseconds. Uh, the previous cant link, the previous capture card like this that I reviewed, and granted not all of them had the same results. The previous one I reviewed, had 46 milliseconds of latency, which was blazing fast. This one, unfortunately, is 118 milliseconds, which is not great, uh, but it did vary a lot. So at times it would jump down to like 80 and then back up to 100 something. So audio syncing may be a little annoying here. So you're going to want the audio already running through it, I suppose. So that's a thing. Unfortunately, another strike against this product is just like the $15 Cantlink clones. It only has mono audio locked to 96 kilohertz. However, it accepts a stereo input and does this weird like modulation thing to play both channels at once, but not exactly how you would want. If you're just running a microphone into your camera, totally fine. You're not even going to notice because microphones are mono anyway, unless you're using one of those double sided stereo microphones. But if you are using those microphones or you're trying to run an audio mix, you're going to run into some issues. So again, this is handy to pair with your Atomos video recorders or switchers to record your feed. Here is my sample A7S III running at 4K30 into the Ninja V and then, or five, and then out to the Atomos Connect. The cool thing with Atomos switchers as well is if you have a 4K60 input, for example, or whatever, you can actually control the output resolution so it will scale it for you, which is pretty handy. So you can actually scale it down to 1080p for this, but since it does accept 4K30, you don't need to here. This is fine. If we look at quality side by side, you can see that the quality from this is not great and not really up to the standard you would expect from Atomos. It is motion JPEG. It's literally JPEGs. So the there's added blocking, there's compression, there's noise in the shadows. But also, as with all of these capture card clones of this specific model, the color is not correct. You can see there's a lot of difference here between the actual ninja's recording, which obviously it's 4K and whatever, but the colors are different. You get all this like extra red and pink on my skin that doesn't exist on the actual ninja recording. So, again, when you can get the same thing for $15, it makes it hard to recommend it for $80. That being said, the difference of buying from a reputable company like Atomos or all these no-name resellers on eBay, Amazon, and AliExpress that will disappear overnight or change their name or whatever comes down to a couple things that may be important to you, especially if you are in the video or broadcast field. That is quality control and warranties. So with quality control, something that I ran into whenever I put up my review of the $15 version of this is that a lot of people were buying up on the various different links and some of them got capture cards of these that did not have heat sinks on the main chip. And then theirs lasted for about three hours or so, I think was the average that everyone said. And then they overheated, they got really, really hot, they started smelling and they never worked again because they had no capacity to cool the main HDMI kind of intake chip on the capture card. There's also other little quirks or differences or issues or whatever. Theoretically, I don't have any more than a sample size of one or any extended period of time to verify this, but theoretically you can assume with a, comp a reputable company like Atomos that with this you have more strict quality controls so that every product that everyone gets is basically the same, it's consistent, and it's reliable. It's not going to die. These I did confirm it does have a heatsink on it, even if it looks identical, otherwise it did come with a heatsink. And you will also theoretically get a little bit better of a warranty other than Amazon's return window. Like you'll get an actual warranty so that if something go, goes wrong or whatever, you will get a warranty and you may get some degree of support with it as well. And for some people that matters, but if you're just in it to spend a quick buck to get a super cheap capture card and you don't mind the gamble of that quality control or warranty support because it's so cheap, you can spend $15 and get the same capture card. You just may have some audio issues. My last set of tests has to do with oddball format support, such as for retro gamers and things like that. With this, I test it with the RetroTINK 2X, which is a line doubler for retro consoles, as well as the open source scan converter, also an upscaler for consoles. Using the RetroTINK 2S, 2X to pass through a one chip Super Nintendo, 
240p input actually worked and it didn't look terrible. It did not look bad, but it was clearly being detected as 480p or 480i because anytime I tried to manually manage the input resolution, it was still running at 720 by 480. So it's not true 240p, but if you, for whatever reason, you needed to pass that in, you, you could. 480p works as well, but again, as with many of these other clones, it's still, even at that lower resolution, which is inexcusable IMO, it's still only running at MJPEG. YUI2 only works in 480p at 10 FPS. The open source scan converter actually worked in all modes, 2x through 5x, and it looks pretty solid, surprisingly. However, it does appear that the 5x mode may be running at only 30 FPS, so that may be a problem for some of you. 480i seems to work and it seems to be deinterlaced, but it doesn't necessarily look the best. Like there's some weird jaggy extra stuff going on. Uh, 1080i also works and seems to be getting deinterlaced, but the frame rate seems very low, like maybe even 15 FPS or like 20, like not a smooth 30, nevertheless 60. So that was weird. So conclusion time. <laughs> I love Atomos as a company. I love most of their products, but this almost feels like an insult. As someone who knows capture cards and is familiar with the scene and is expecting, Atomos to produce something great that people can buy in this time where everyone suddenly needs a capture card. This is not it. A capture card that's been on the market for over a year at this point, from what I can tell, or about a year, and is available as cheap as $3. They charge 80 bucks for it and not include the accessories that half of them include in the first place. Some of them even came with USB-C cables to use on phones and things like that. And to not really do anything else with it. In fact, the driver and everything is still stock that comes with it from the factory. So it shows up as USB video. Doesn't matter overall, but if you're looking for it, you know, you want to know that you're running with something tweaked and managed by Atomos and you're not here. You're getting a relabel of a mass manufactured Chinese product that you can buy for a fraction of the price and doesn't even need USB 3. Like it says USB 3 on it. It has the little blue USB 3.0 end here but it's a USB 2.0 card. Like there may actually be a USB 3.0 chipset in here, but the latency is still worse than even the USB 2.0 models and the actual capture specs that it outputs do not utilize USB 3.0 in any way. It is still, it works fine on USB 2.0. I did half of my testing on it because it was the exact same results either way. You don't need a USB 3 port for it, which is useful, but again, not differentiating itself from it. And I, <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm so torn. Like, yeah, if you want to buy from a reputable company, get the QA, get the warranty. It's probably the way to go. And hopefully, like I said, this is the first step for Atomos where they clone a product, see what everyone thinks, and then produces something of their own. I hope they come out with something that's much more of a banger than this because compared to all of other Atomos's other, which are fairly high-end products, this is a joke. This is very disappointing. And in many cases, the $50 black 4K pass-through 1080p capture capture card that I just reviewed is a better buy or cheaper. And it's a completely different product. Or again, if you want to take the gamble, you can pay $15 for this. And at the moment, at least at the time of recording, the uh, Live Gamer Mini from Avermedia, which is a USB 2.0 card, is on sale for $81 and is a better buy than this for the pass-through or the software features alone. So... Like I said, I'm really torn here. I'm trying to play devil's advocate because there are reasons that this isn't necessarily a terrible thing that Atomos did, but as a product, it is pretty disappointing given that I reviewed it almost six months ago for a fraction of the price. Well, that's it. Product affiliate links will be in the description below. As always, if you do want to pick one up for yourself, hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more tech, education, and stream guides. Uh, playlist link will also be in the description if you want to see all of my other capture card reviews, including the one that this is a knockoff of a knockoff of, and I'll see you in the next one. Hope you learned something today.